Okay, review and teardown time of a uh, multimeter, the UT UT one three nine C, a multimeter you can get off of uh, eBay. Uh, UNIT produces a, a number of meters actually, which have a, a fairly decent feature set and pretty decent accuracy for the price. I bought this one off eBay for uh, forty nine ninety nine. In fact, I'll give a shout out to the uh, the vendor I bought it from because this is the uh, third time I bought a meter from uh, this individual at uh, called ninety nine cent hobbies. Uh, and uh, rapid shipping. Uh, it was uh, on my doorstep uh, nine days after I ordered it from Hong Kong. Uh, the UNIT 139C is a newer meter. Uh, the meter I tore down previously, uh, UT61E, uh, it's a meter that's about <laughs> all of $9 more expensive. Um, this is a 22,000 count meter and this is a 6,000 count meter, but there's some uh, feature differences between these two. Um, I thought it makes a useful uh, comparison that I'll use the 61E uh, sometimes in this video. Okay, uh, I'm normally reviewing these meters in regards to uh, low voltage electronics design, and I'll explain why that's important uh, in a moment. Uh, but uh, let's just look at what uh, it does offer. Uh, obviously, the, the DC volt range, uh, the millivolt range, which is uh, very useful for electronics design, uh, resistance, and interestingly enough, uh, with a selection, you can get, of course, the continuity, the diode checking, and then uh, it goes in actually capacitor check mode. Uh, there is a built-in uh, temperature sensor. Uh, oh, pardon me, you'll plug in a thermocouple, but you can measure temperature. Very useful. Uh, a frequency counter, obviously not super number of accurate digits because of uh, the fact it's a multimeter. The microamp range, uh, obviously pretty critical if you're doing micro, uh, electronics design. Milliamp range and amp range, all very useful. Uh, NCV, uh, this is actually a, a sensor for uh, power when you're looking at if a line has power on or not or an electrician's feature interesting enough and there's actually a setting that uh, you can plug in an external uh, clamp on uh, ammeter kind of helpful uh, interesting enough it has a backlight uh, which is uh, really useful if you're uh, in under a car's dash or something a backlight is sure useful to uh, be able to read the values um, it can actually also do a recording of the min and max. It has relative mode, and um, you can of course lock the ranges out. It's not a ranging meter, but you can lock it if you'd like. Uh, that's not bad actually. There's a lot of features sitting here for $50. Okay, first things first. Uh, anytime I buy a new meter, and actually periodically uh, I check to make sure the meter is still uh, within uh, a reasonable amount of accuracy, you need a voltage standard and a resistance standard and a current standard in order to uh, of course, make those determinations. Uh, such items can be very easily purchased off the internet. This one's called the uh, thevoltagestandard.com. Uh, not a bad little unit at all. Uh, very inexpensive, but uh, has some pretty decent uh, specs. Uh, without further ado, let's turn it on. Uh, the first thing to check is just uh, the basic uh, DC voltage range. The meter's supposed to be accurate to uh, plus or minus 0.8%. Uh, the meter here, it's a 5 volt output, and you can see it's, of course, recording uh, 4 millivolts off of that. Uh, that's well within the spec. In fact, that's uh, 10 times better than the published spec. So good. Uh, the basic DC uh, seems to be working on this one. Uh, next test, of course, uh, is all about uh, resistance. There's uh, three very precise resistors, and they've been chosen such that you should get uh, 111 uh, kilohms when uh, the meter goes in. It's also a good chance to look at how fast it auto ranges. And that, that's decent. That's a decent auto range, and of course, you can see it's recording the right value. So uh, out of box the resistance looks like it's okay okay uh, last basic test that i can do with this uh, reference standard is uh, the current measurement i have it on the uh, the microamp range it's supposed to be a one milliamp output uh, of course 1000 microamps is exactly one milliamp and if i go on to the milliamp range uh, it should record one milliamp it's coming at 0.99 again that's actually within the uh, accuracy of the meter so that's fine and the ampere range records uh, a zero. should have recorded 0 0.01, but of course you shouldn't be really in the amps range when you're trying to measure uh, milliamp type events. Okay, let's talk about a setting here called NCV, and you can see it says EF. Um, EF is, I guess, an electric field. This is more of an electrician's thing, but have a, have a lamp socket here. The wire is live, there's electricity on the plug. You can see as I bring it closer, it detects the electric field. Uh, real handy if you're doing like things like house wiring, I guess. Uh, more of an electrician's uh, feature, but um, certainly uh, could be handy. Okay, let's talk about uh, 6,000 count. What does that mean? This is a 22,000 count meter and this is a 6,000 count meter. Uh, I have the, uh, they're both in DC voltage range and they have them in parallel and just out of the picture I have uh, my power supply. 
And uh, what I'll do is I'll uh, turn it on. I should produce a little under 6 volts here. 5.8 6 volts in the meters. Uh, they're all within accuracy. So, And you can see they're all giving about the same number of degrees, uh, digits of accuracy. Uh, as I bring the meter up though, uh, to 6 volts, what will happen is that the 6,000 count meter uh, will no longer be able to display that value and it'll uh, start rounding down. Now you can see what happened there is this meter had an auto range and it's now declaring 6.28 volts. The 22,000 count meter you can see is giving you that uh, extra digit of accuracy. So that's one of the major differences between these two meters is the, the, the count range. Um, and sometimes it can be helpful as, it, as it, you go from the auto range, as you auto range into certain ranges, you can gain and lose an extra digit of accuracy. Okay, let's talk about the uh, frequency counter of the meter. You can see again, the two meters are in parallel. I'm just using this uh, little um, function generator that came from Germany. Uh, I got a video on it too, it's kind of neat. Uh, I set it to right now to one kilohertz, and you can see both meters are reading slightly different results. Uh, it's supposed to be 0.1% on the, the uni T, and uh, are we within boundaries? Mm. Percent, yeah. So we're actually within tolerance, I guess. Uh, let me just crank it up. So let's go to 10 megahertz, the uh, the meter over here. It's 1 megahertz. Let's see if we can... Uh, 2, so. 3, 10 megahertz. And they're both agreeing. That's good. And so it's within spec. And uh, I should reach the limit of this particular function generator as well. So. Uh, it looks like the uh, frequency counter is uh, performing as advertised, so that's good. So the meter comes with a, a set of uh, perfectly adequate leads. Uh, they're, they're fine. They even come with a nice little cover so you uh, can reduce the amount of exposed metal so you don't uh, short out things. Okay, let's talk about the continuity beeper. Some really low-end meters are a bit frustrating when you touch the leads together. They uh, they take a long time to, to sense whether there's a, a conductive pass, which is a bit frustrating because often you're using it in troubleshooting. I look for opens. And this meter is, uh, is just fine, actually. Yep, that would be frustration-free, I think. In terms of temperature measurement, it uh, uh, comes with a uh, thermal couple. Uh, not sure if it's the K or J type, but it uh, looks pretty standard. Uh, unfortunately, with all these meters, they don't accept the uh, uh, industry standard. They, they're sort of a custom made off here. It is. It's a K type thermal couple, quite clearly labeled. Uh, it would be here, I presume. And of course, it's reading the temperature in my lab. Uh, you can see this meter, unfortunately, is only accurate to, uh, to whole degrees. It doesn't do the fractional degrees, which is uh, too bad. Uh, since I was compa comparing to the UNIT, uh, the UNIT doesn't measure temperature at all on the 61E range. Uh, if you get the 61C range, uh, strangely enough, though, it does actually have a temperature uh, capabilities. And uh, single degrees, mm, a little frustrating. So the first thing to note when I've got the back off, it's a couple of dull leaves powered up, that's nice. And uh, you can see actually the fuse uh, for the current rating can be uh, replaced without removing uh, further parts of the body. Uh, that's nice, obviously, as you expose all your electronics, uh, you always have the chance of uh, damaging things. Okay, another good sign. Uh, this is a ceramic fuse, obviously, uh, but even better, it's rated to 600 volts. Uh, one thing that uh, I did note when I tore down the 61E, uh, they only had a 250 volt rating on their current, and that was because they were using a, a fuse that was meant for um, uh, British appliance uh, cords, if you can believe it. Um, unless you bought the meter from Germany, in which case they supplied uh, a more appropriate fuse. So again, uh, good, this is actually the right voltage uh, for the fuse. Okay, obviously the back uh, has been opened up. Uh, there's another fuse here. This is the, uh, the 10 amp range fuse. Uh, it also is uh, rated to 600 volts AC. So hooray, uh, they're no longer using um, British standard uh, fuses for their current uh, ranges. Uh, that's a good thing to see. In terms of uh, build quality, uh, it's got some good things. Uh, it seems to be universal, the, uh, the ones they've torn down from Unity. 
obviously the input jacks, but you can see that uh, they're strain relieved. The actual jack is, is here and it puts the pressure on this mechanical body, but the actual solder joint comes down through this lead here, which um, should result in uh, less stress fracturing. Uh, uh, you can see here a piece of wire. This is uh, to create a voltage drop in the high current uh, measurement range, I should uh, think. Uh, obviously the terminals for the battery, uh, the crystal for what we'll find is almost certainly a microprocessor based controller on the other side of the board. Okay, so uh, here's obviously the uh, the top side of the board. Um, this is the uh, selector switch here. You can see it has a silvery sheen which means uh, there's no hard gold plating. Kind of the first compromise you have to make when you, uh, you come down a bit in the market. Um, higher end meters like Agilence and uh, Flukes will have uh, hard gold often on the selector switches because obviously as it wears out uh, the contacts, if they become uh, more resistive, it can result in some measurement errors. A couple of uh, indicator LEDs, uh, but more importantly up here, uh, the, the heart of this uh, measurement for any meter now of course is the, the primary integrated circuit here. Uh, I'll insert the picture here. I couldn't uh, find any part numbers on the web. This is a, a new part to me. I haven't seen it in uh, the previous UNITs that I've torn down. And then it appears associated with it, this is a, a small uh, serial EEPROM, um, I would hazard to guess it either has calibration or program data that's related to this controller here. So, uh, very straightforward. This is, of course is the connection to the, uh, the LCD uh, with the, uh, the, the pink here is uh, so-called zebra striping, a, a very traditional way of mounting an LCD. Nothing uh, too remarkable there. Uh, same thing in terms of solder quality on this side. Uh, I took a good look with my uh, magnifying loop and uh, uh, it looks good actually. Um, it's one thing I've always seen on the UNIT products is the soldering uh, is always come out adequate. Okay, other notable differences. Uh, the 60 series actually comes with a little optical port in the back and you can uh, turn the meter into a data logger. I didn't think that would actually be a very useful feature, but I must admit I've actually used it uh, long, a large number of times. Uh, there is no such uh, provisions in this meter, no uh, communication back to a computer. Okay, well that was uh, pretty promising. Uh, the meter seemed to meet its uh, accuracy claims uh, from what I can measure. Uh, certainly a richly featured meter. You get a lot of uh, capabilities here. Build quality seemed quite good actually. It's, um, it looked fairly credible inside. Uh, in comparison to its uh, 61E, uh, unfortunately it's not a clear-cut uh, decision if you're trying to decide between these two meters. One's eight dollars more. Uh, you get, of course, an optical port for data logging back to the computer. You get 22,000 counts, so it's positive things. Uh, but this meter, unfortunately, is missing the, uh, the ability to measure a temperature, which is um, something I, I personally find very helpful. And uh, there's no backlight. So, um, another interesting uh, product coming out of uh, eBay and uh, China.